Hi, Saudi. Uh, I'm Michael Lee. I'm from the Nerds of Color. Um, I just glad to I can get talk to you. You're such a wonderful filmmaker. After seeing um, Self and a couple of your other live action shorts. Um, oh, you, you found on it. Your website on your yeah. <laughs> um especially about the kind of the self like are you experiencing these kind of symptoms and whatnot i i saw that little uh short on uh vimo so yeah that, that that those were kind of that was kind of fun to watch um so how are you by the way i'm good i just had my second cup of coffee so i feel <laughs> very very good right now <laughs> it's always you? a good Nice to get that uh, second shot of ca uh, caffeination in the, during the day. I'm doing well. Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty excited. This is the new year, you know, I, and I got to get to talk to you. Um, this is pretty exciting. Um, so before I get to this, uh, I just want to want to know about your journey um, to Pixar and how you started at UCLA. You know, uh, uh, I heard that it's more of a, a, a school that's um, more known for its live action department in the undergrad than it's... Uh, then it's animation because you went, you took animation course, uh, they took some master courses basically. And uh, I just wanted to know um, how those experiences helped you lead up to uh, uh, Pixar and then how that helped shape your, I guess, production management style and storytelling style. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, UCLA is a very small program. They only accept like 30 students a year. And um, the animation program is extremely small too. They, um, I mean, I don't know how it is now. Like, it's kind of crazy to say <laughs> I graduated like eight years ago. So who knows, maybe it like expanded. But um, back then I was, was taking animation classes with the master students while taking my live action classes with the undergrad students. And um, what I realized at college was that okay, like I'm getting a lot of live action experience in the animation. So I really focus on getting like animation specific internships was kind of like my goal because I felt like I needed more of that because I didn't have much exposure to it. Um, so that led me to go to Cartoon Network and like DreamWorks. And honestly, it was great because it whipped me to shape for Pixar. <laughs> and I'm very, very grateful for that experience because I was like, such a newbie that like I didn't realize working animation was kind of like an office job that was nine to five versus live action on set is like 12 to 13 hour days there's obviously a hierarchy but like mm -hmm. there's a lot more kind of like flexibility who you could talk to versus like I think I really learned how to work like an adult office job so yeah when I um came to Pixar I came in as like an intern um and kind of really again like it was this weird thing of like when I was in UCLA I wanted to do more animation and then when I got to Pixar I was like I love my job but I miss live action so I was making like short films on the side while working my full-time mm -hmm. job uh in production management so it sounds like you were working like kind of around along the around the clock oh my gosh and then it, it seems like you're going at that pace too because um you you're doing these kind of um short uh live action shorts as well uh, how much fun is it for you to actually keep going at the pace you're going at, um, working, you know, doing your production management at Pixar while uh, doing your live action shorts on the side? Yeah, I didn't have a life was kind of like <laughs> the main thing about it. Like I was, I would say like I spent the majority, I just turned 30. So I feel like I'm like, just like you're saying, like the new year brings different things. Me being 30 is just like, whoa, I spent the majority of my 20s like working nights and weekends on like my passion projects. I would even like use Pixar as like my office and like I would stay on campus until like midnight or one o'clock in the morning, just like working on my scripts or like working on edits and like just constantly working. But I think it also comes from my mother. Like I, I come from like an immigrant background. My mom, mm -hmm. um, you know, fled a war in Ethiopia both my mom and my dad actually. So they came here to the States and I've kind of learned from my mom of like how to work hard. So even though it was hard, I was used to it because I've kind of been doing that my whole life and also watching her do it too. So there's kind of like this thing of like, I can do it. <laughs> so just a quick follow up. What, what's, what's a break like for you? What's like, you know, some time off, you know? Um, traveling with friends has been like, okay thing yeah like I um would travel with friends and uh, also like I'm really into coffee so like I'm 
slowly getting into roasting coffee too because Ethiopia oh. like that's like the most Ethiopian about me like I just coffee um so those are kind of like the things I use to like chill out so let's get into self um actually um what briefly what is it about since we I I, I read about it but what, what is it about just for our viewers yeah, self. Um, so self is short for self sabotage. It's about a woman, a doll who self sabotages herself to belong. Um, and then throughout this journey, she kind of goes through this like experience of rediscovering herself at the same time. Uh, so the story kind of follows someone who uh, I don't know how much of a spoil it is or not, but like kind of rips herself to be like everyone else. Um, kind of like this really big theme of belonging. <laughs> so there, there are a lot of. Um... One of the premises in the email, it said that the film was about, the short was about self-discovery. Um, mm -hmm. And what makes this one unique is it's told through um, kind of kind of your story and how the characters are portrayed as well. So part one of my question is, what was kind of the genesis of um, using the sounds the way you do to communicate and convey uh, emotions, I guess? Yeah, like, I feel like self is a part of my story of, like, struggling to belong, like, as a w Black woman and just in general in different ways, whether it's, like, at the workplace or, like, also especially at UCLA. I think I have, like, my own – I'm from L.A., but mm -hmm. I'm from the east side of L.A., oh, so, okay. like, UCLA is on the west side, so when I had to move to Westwood, I was like, what – who are these people? Have they been in this L.A.? This, like, I was in my own little bubble in that sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's also kind of like my mom's story, too, because I think a lot about my mom and how, like, she came to the United States and how there's, like, a sense of, like, needing to integrate and be like everyone else. And I think, like, the biggest thing that showed was, like, making, being able to sp speak English um, and being able to, like, speak it kind of, like, coherently, too, because mm -hmm. when, um, one of the things about self is just, like, um, it's not you can't really see a lot in the film, but like when you look at her, the way that she's carved, she has like African tattoos on her. She has like a chest, uh, a crest on her chest or a cross. She has like these two 11s next to her eye that represents that she's from the Tigray region of Ethiopia. Um, and like, and she also has like three carvings on her neck too. And like, for me, it's kind of just like, t like the experience of like, you know, being an immigrant and coming to a new urban city and how you're seen, but not heard um unless you could speak the language of everyone around you so there's kind of like a bit of that too that I want to like touch on when I was making this story so you touched on some cultural aspects my second part of my question was um with the central character the protagonist um she seems to because she is made out of wood is there a sense of um not a sense of but do you guys use do 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 you use um, any uh, musical instruments um, from Ethiopia actually just to bring that kind of sense of cultural um, aspect to her character? We did or... do it uh, with the score, except it's not okay. um, it's not very like in your face Ethiopian music. Mm -hmm. There's like rhythm and patterns, like okay. uh, in Ethiopian music. There's like these drums and there's like a da da. And if you listen to the scores like closely, you can hear some of that in the mm -hmm. in the way that we like the rhythm and beat of the music. But her actual sounds, we actually really rely mostly on like the material that she's made out of. We really wanted okay. her to feel like very earth and very raw. Um, so a lot of hollow wooden sounds for her versus like the other characters. Um, we wanted them to feel like shiny and sparkly and really new. Uh, and like beautiful so we really did like we were leaning towards more like higher pitch deans because that was really attractive to hear in the air okay yeah that thank you um my my next question is um I was wondering how much of the be careful what you wish for uh played a role in itself because you know Disney and uh, the kind of the Pixar um thing when you wish upon a star sort of sort of aspect uh I was wondering how much of that ill-fated wish, you know, be careful of what you wish for. Um, and then how, how she discovers she much, she, she loses herself when she, be, um, she loses herself basically into how much of that uh, ill-fated wish played into the role of that 
shape of the story. Yeah, I wanted to play with this thing of like, um, kind of like being kind of like taking account of your consequences a bit. So mm-hmm. like, that was something like personal about me too, where like, you know, when I realized I'm like trying to fit in or simulate with a group of people, um, by the time I realize it, it's kind of too late and I'm suffering the consequences of that. So that kind of was like what the wish and the shooting of the star kind of came to be, where it's just like, she really, really wants this, but she doesn't understand the consequences of her actions. And um, so at the end of the film, did you watch the film, by the way? I don't know. If yeah, you could- I did. I did. <laughs> it was great. Honestly, I, I I don't want to get it. That's You mentioned spoilers. I didn't want to get too much into spoilers during this interview because I don't want to ruin it for anybody because it's so magical when I watched it. And just to see how like you said she's ripping apart herself and you know eventually she goes into that one point where she becomes I, like I said I don't want to spoil but yeah, yeah. but uh it, it goes into some places where I didn't expect it to go and it's really nice and refreshing to see that it can go it's willing to go there basically you're willing to go there and I like that yeah and I think that's something where like it comes from my taste where like I do kind of like darker a little bit darker tone films but also like I think that's something about the stop motion medium that kind of allows that kind of storytelling too if you watch like a lot of stop motion films they tend to go a little more of like not so happy ending kind of feeling Mm -hmm. like I was like the whole time while making this film I didn't want her to and then she put herself to the back and everything went back to normal I kind of wanted to feel more grounded and not like a Disney any kind of film, but more of like a satisfying, like she did this thing. Um, and again, without trying to be put spoilers, she got this wish, she did this things, but then she realized it's actually what she wanted. Um, but she can't 100% go back to who she was before. Um, and that's what the cracks on the face kind of represents, where it's like, yeah, she chose herself and we see it like at the end credits of her putting herself back together, but she'll still have those cracks on her face to remind her of the consequences of her actions. So you mentioned that, you know, you experienced some changes in, in your life as you went from UCLA to Pixar. I was wondering, did you discover anything new about yourself during the production of this film? That's a great question. Yeah, it made me realize I really want to be a director. That was one thing. Um, It made me really... So when I was at UCLA, I studied animation, but specifically I studied stop motion. So I was really into the stop motion classes. And I think the reason why was because I knew I didn't want to learn. I didn't have like kind of like the draw motivation to draw. And the all my... Um, I guess experience of filmmaking was live action. So to kind of marry the two, stop motion was kind of felt like the perfect fit where I'm like, okay, I'm not sitting on a screen just drawing, but I'm also like not just on set, like I'm building things. So there's something about the comedy show too that I love and I wanted, uh, yeah, I kind of told myself like, I really want to make a stop motion film to kind of bring a full circle of my experience at UCLA. So that was really something nice where I realized that like, yeah, I do love this medium and this film really showed me that I did so so and I couldn't do it without Tippet too so I think that's <laughs> like Tippet Studios like we will not be where we are today without them <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Tippet Studios yes. um one of my one of my final questions is um I wanted to know how you struck a balance between kind of telling the rest uh, a story that's so resonating while also staying true to your voice um and celebrating um your Ethiopian culture as well Yeah, I think like, so when I was making this film, um, or I should say when I was writing it, um, there was actually another civil war that happened in Ethiopia that no media or anything was Mm -mm. covering Mm -mm. on. Um, And it happened literally the day of the 2020 elections. So Mm. when the whole world had their eyes on the United States of like, who's going to be the president, Joe Biden or Trump? Um, I, on the other hand, was like on the phone with my mom because all internet, all power and all everything was caught off at Ethiopia and we didn't know if our family was alive or not. So it was kind of this weird thing, like, because I'm, I'm Ethiopian, but I'm also Ethiopian American. So there's like a kind of sense of just like, I'm Ethiopian, but I, I didn't live there. Right. I don't know what the daily life is like, but I did visit Ethiopia before. Um, so there was this weird thing of like, 
in America, there's this huge election happening, but then also there's this huge war happening in Ethiopia. So it was just, it was a lot of things I was kind of like dealing with emotionally and personally during that time frame. And I think that um, there's also part of me just like, there isn't a lot of like kind of Ethiopian, rarely, except the weekend, shout out to Abel um, for bringing the culture. But like, there isn't a, any really kind of like uh, acknowledgement of my culture. And I felt like it was important to have myself be seen. So that was something I was really like satisfied about, really wanted to show on screen. Finally, um, what what do you hope audiences get out of this? Because this is really an impactful story. So, yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it's just like, I think, like, I know, like, be yourself. I think there's like something about that of like, yes, on the <laughs> yeah. surface, the story is about belong, like, be yourself. It's okay to be yourself. You don't always have to belong. But I think like, underneath that, what I hope the audience will understand is kind of more like empathizing with people struggling to belong and kind of like seeing what sacrifices they have to go through in mm -hmm. order to fit into your circle. And I hope that people who, you know, are in the majority or in the more privileged sense could kind of uh, have their eyes open more and be more kind of receptive to other people around them. The activist directors, comments and the lectures, fanboys, professional artists and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you, talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC. In full color, you see me. The hard knock.